Hi, this is Bob. How can I help you? Hi, Bob. This is Jeff Boyardee. How are you today? I'm all right. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. Thank you. I'm calling in hopes of putting together a custom solution. I'm calling from American Drawbacks here in Larkspur, Colorado. Okay. And specifically, we're looking to augment our laser workstations that we're working with here. I'm more of an ear witness. Someone was talking about you all over there, and I thought I'd just give you a call myself. So you already have lasers? Yes. Mm-hmm. And you're looking to and 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 you're looking to do have work done on the on the workstations. One of the things we're trying to accomplish is we're looking to integrate a goggle type apparatus, which can potentially use sensors to fire lasers hands free, or translate impulses or brain waves into an actuator that will fire our laser. Something comfortable. Maybe with what kind of rubber. laser? Do, what kind of laser do you have? Well, what we do, we are currently engraving onto giant spheres, about six hundred feet in circumference, and we've been using these sabers made by a company in Mount Vesuvius. But we're looking to go hands-free over here. Have you ever worked with a hands-free apparatus of any type? Well, I mean, no. I haven't heard of that kind of application. And neither have I. And huh. and also the other thing is we don't work on other people's laser systems. I see. We build, you know, our primary business is selling our lasers, and we offer custom integration services along with our lasers. Okay. But but we're not, you know, like a lot of people call me and say, yeah, I got a, I got a, I, I, I bought a laser from Keons and I want to buy an enclosure from you. Uh-huh. And we don't do that. Well, I see where you're coming from. That doesn't preclude us from doing something together. We'd be more than willing to purchase a laser from you. Uh, we okay. are working with giant carbon steel spherical balls hanging from cranes, and we want to be able... 600 feet. We are working with giant carbon steel spherical balls. Yeah, they're hanging from cranes, and we want to just... We're looking for precision, sending the lasers precisely where we need, and these sabers from this Italian company just are not giving us the results that we're satisfied with. And because we've got OSHA now breathing down our necks <laughs> so that we want it to go hands-free operation or at least something ergonomic with ergonomic engraving action that we need. You understand. Um. It's all part of our future commemoratives program where we actually predict certain outcomes of everything from sporting events to gambling tournaments, to rodeos, so that we can already have merchandise available instantly after the event. That's what sets us apart here at American Drawbacks. We've tried everything from those sabers uh, from the Mount Vesuvius company to we actually climbed rope and scaffolding in order to burnish these enormous steel Wait spheres. a minute. I, I want to see this. I'm, I'm trying to get my head around this, so forgive me. Yes, so sir. No, sir. Go ahead. Uh-huh, sir. Saber lasers. How's, how do they spell? There's a number of different ways to place to spell saber. Spelling saber. S-A- yeah, how do they sp- Go ahead. S-A-B-R-E. Okay, that's a different. Saber. Um. And we believe giant spherical structures are the future for, you know, corporations looking to stand out and institute enormous ball bearings on their campuses for display purposes. So that's sort of been the bread and butter of our whole operation here. Um. Do you perhaps offer a type of wand, which would allow a more freestyle approach? Something with like a whip action or lasso action with your laser? No, they're... They're not designed to move, and they're they're really I mean they're galvanometer steered lasers, so mm-hmm. they're they need to be held perfectly still. Absolutely. Uh, I can't find anything on saber laser because I see a lot of stuff on lightsabers, and 
you know, and, uh, uh, Oh, yeah, what is their URL? Uh, I could have my assistant send over the URL for this company where we got these sabers from, but it's just imprecise uh, when we How punish. Is it? Okay, so Innova Saber is what I've found. by Co- oh, That's a brand name by Coherent. So, mm. so you want to put, you got this 600-foot ball made out of steel. Yes. And it's on a crane. Correct. And you want to laser engrave information into it. Exactly. Exactly. And you want it and you want to do it while it's held up in the air, hundreds of feet, I would presume. Exactly. When we transmit syntax and embed our desired object you know, just like anybody else, we want end users to identify with our object, just like they would using a verifier or a data matrix scanner. Um, and our laser cavity here offers serialization, you know, prefix and suffix, uh, alphanumerical ID, and vector scalable data, uh, which guarantees our clients that our etchings will be readable, scannable, retrodimensional in nature, but without the right apparatus to transmit the syntax, we're kind of behind the eight ball a little bit. Uh, yeah, the audio. By the way, the the audio that that's coming over so, the phone, it's it's very surreal. There's like an echo in your voice. Oh, let me take you off. Here, let me take you off speaker. Can you hear me a little oh, bit better? That's so much better. I'm Thanks. sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, um, I think our lasers are really more designed for a shop in, or a manufacturing environment where things are, the lasers aren't really designed to move around. There's, you know, there's cables between them and hmm. particularly for the type of wattage that you would need to get into steel. Um, and so you would have to be able to, um, the laser would have to be, I don't even know how you would be able to get something that weighs 30 pounds and it would, takes up a lot of my desk space to get up in the air like that. Um, it's, they're not really, they're really not portable. I, I don't really think uh, they would survive in that environment, the type of environment that you're talking about. Oh, shucks. Well, the fishing rod action was something that the boys on the board recommended we look into and investigate. Something where we could whip the laser wherever we choose, a more of a freestyle application. And I hear what you're saying about the immobility of it. You have to be immobile, and you have to be in a fixed location, and that's fine. Is there any device you offer which would allow more of a um, fishing reel action when transmitting lasers? Because no. we want to ensure unique identifiers with all of our spheres. Yeah, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know where to point you. Oh shucks! We're trying to burnish these enormous spheres that we have, and we work under viaducts typically. And so something yeah. that would be, you know, would be protected from the elements as well. Is this ringing a bell with some kind of custom solution that we might not, fabricate? Not even close. We don't have that sort of capability. Oh, no? No. I mean, we make, you know, we could build a custom cabinet that you can put widgets in, and we can build, you know, turntables or fixtures for, for the laser, but, you know, for parts. But this type of thing and that, I mean, like, no. I mean, it's just totally beyond... We're we're not that big of a company. We don't have that sort of capability. I mean, I, I and I don't and I don't know who does. How about a laser shower type of application? A laser shower. Now you're just way beyond. We do we do low power pulse lasers. Um, so totally beyond what you know. I don't even know. If, I don't even know if such a thing exists. Well, these were, these were avenues that the boys on the board wanted us to explore. 
Can I ask you something? Would it be okay if I put my project manager on with you, Joe? He could answer maybe more specifics in terms of what you do currently offer and what we could presently buy at the present time. Would that be I okay? Think, if I just put I him on, really he'd love to talk to you. Hold on just one sec. Uh, Joe, Bob is on the phone. I'm just going to put him on. Just please speak to Joe real briefly. All right. Okay? Thank you. Hold on one sec for me. Yellow. Hey, Joe, this is Bob over at RMI Laser. How are you doing? Why are you calling me? Uh, I, Jeff was Jeff was trying to tell me what he needed as far as a laser to, to mark on these big spheres, and I was trying to tell them that it was way beyond our capability, and I didn't even know where to point him. I still don't know why you called me. I wasn't calling you. Jeff was calling me, and then he put you on the phone. Who's Jeff? You put a couple of criminals? You'll be in jail tonight because I report this to the police every time I get through. You're a motherfucking piece of shit. Get a job, piece of shit. Dude. Get a job. Criminal. Hey, I have a job. Get a job. You want to come down here and put me in jail? Come down here, pussy. I'll whip your butt. I'll I won't put you. Around. But I report to the police, and you will be dropped in jail. Dude, for you, called, you, called, you called me. I didn't call you. You called You're me. You're a piece of shit. You're, I never called you. I You're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. You're a piece of shit. Motherfucking chicken shit ass. You're not worth him a piece of shit. 